guys welcome back to another video today we are on I want to say week 16 right 14 for yeah week 16 legit um, I missed posting a video what was it I missed week 13 um, I didn't miss recording it though so what would be 14 is now 13 and this week I'm actually going to just post two um, as soon as I can get a chance to. I've already got it mostly edited, but I'll put it out quickly. Um, that way I get caught up. I actually want to get caught up further than that because you guys are all two weeks behind current time. So what you see happened two weeks ago, more or less. And it's starting to get pretty damn confusing. So I'd rather just have this week be this week, um, which means I'll have to post back-to-back -back videos until I get caught up, which wouldn't be too bad because I'm not super far behind. I do actually have to go to work in a couple hours. This one's gonna be pretty quick, and it is already quite toasty. It's not quite high noon yet. High noon here is around three, um, and right now it's around one. So it's only gonna get warmer. I don't know what the high is, but right now it's around 70. But the plants are actually doing really good. They're loving the warm weather. The tomatoes are all doing really well. I was actually editing um, a video last night and was laughing at my puny sad tomatoes and my puny onions, which I'll just get up and give you guys the garden tour. Okay, so the tomatoes are actually doing really, really good already. It's quite amazing. We actually have a tomato that has started to form and I'll show you which one that is here in just a second. But this is the blue cream here. And if you remember, both the blue cream and the blue purple, or sorry, both the blue cream and the blueberry had turned slightly purple, what with the cold weather and all that. Um, now they are fully dark green, doing amazing. I pick off suckers off these guys like beasts. So they're doing really, really good. You can see the black semen over there is also doing pretty good. It's a little baby tomato. What is this? This is the chocolate cherry. It is the first one to set fruit. So what we've got there is a baby spineless crimson okra. I'm excited about that. Shishi toe peppers doing pretty good. Of course, all of the onions are doing quite amazing as well. They are getting so big. It's kind of crazy, actually. Okay, as for the second bed of tomatoes, they are all also doing very good. Cannot complain one bit. As you can see, I added in some flowers. I've got my marigolds finely planted and popping up. Some zinnias, a couple of cosmoses, um, not a whole lot of variation, but that's about it for this bed. They're all doing really good. Here's the Japanese black trifel, and it's looking like the black semen. It's doing pretty good. The, this is the Wagner blue-green. As you can see, it still is experiencing quite a bit of leaf curl, unfortunately. And I don't know if it'll ever stop, but it's still growing, so I cannot complain one bit. Subarctic plenty. Can you guys see that right there? That is the Tokyo Tokyo. What is it? Tokyo Tokyo cucumber. Tokyo Tokyo cucumber. I don't remember which way it went, but that is the cucumber plant. I didn't have room for it, so it got stuffed in between these two tomato plants. And again, here is the pink ox heart. It too is still got a little bit of leaf curl on it. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about it at this point. Again, it's still growing new foliage on there. So I see it set in flowers as well. Can't really complain on that aspect. If it gives me tomatoes, it can be as curly and droopy as it wants. So behind me we actually have the summer plants. I am super excited that I finally gave up on catering to them and got them out here. 
I did have them covered with burlap for a couple of times. Um, it did get a little cold, but I didn't lift the burlap high enough over this squash plant and you can see the damage it caused. So plant row covers don't make any use of them if it's not above your plant, raised above your plant. If it is touching your plant, then it's gonna be completely useless. It'll have moisture touch it, cold will be able to touch it, and it'll kill all the foliage on there, much like what happened to the squash plant. So you gotta kinda be careful of that. As you can see, everyone else is just fine, and I'll show you the rest of them to the other side of me here as soon as I flip the camera around, but I just wanted to point out that though my stick is above my plant, the side's still very much touched and killed quite a few leaves on this poor little squash plant. Look at this one. You know, that is a doornail. Due to my own incompetence, really, is I just didn't pay attention to it, didn't take the time or the effort to make sure that the tarp was, or the burlap was raised high enough above all of my plants equally and not touching any of the foliage those couple of nights. But since then, it's been okay, so I haven't had to worry about it too much. Let's take a look at them, because they're doing pretty good. So this is the Purple Beauty bell pepper that I planted, and that is the original one. I did decide to keep it simply because I couldn't bear killing it. It's got new foliage growing on it, but you could tell the difference in the happiness between the old one and the new one is just insane. Of course, the Chinese pink celery is doing amazing, as well as the kale. That is the Scottish blue curl kale, doing pretty darn good. And finally, the scarlet kale is starting to look like it's pepping up quite a bit. And the squash that is sad is the scallop squash, the white scallop squash. So over here, we've got the I don't remember if I've got straight neck or crip neck squash anymore, so whatever squash that is, it's a yellow squash. The broccoli that is just taking over everything, absolutely over everything. And then it looks like we have the banana pepper and the mini bells because the shishi toe is in the onion bed with the okra. Let's take a closer look at this broccoli because it looks gorgeous. And like for reference here, my hand, the broccoli leaf. <laughs> given my hands are small, but that's just pretty crazy. I will be excited, and mind you, I guess, let me rephrase that. This is the biggest portion of the leaf. The leaf goes all the way back there. <laughs> but I'll be excited when it starts to give me actual broccoli and not just foliage. All right, so I got the Mexican gherkin here, doing really good. I just stuck him in the ground, sticks and all. He's still trellising quite well. Try not to mess with them too much because their tendrils are pretty delicate. As you can see, this one died off there. Sad day. Sad, sad day. Some of its leaves are turning kind of yellow and dying back, but we've been getting extremely hot days, yet really moist ones too. Wasabi radishes. Marigold. More radishes. Lemon cucumber, starting trellis, has flowers. Look at those little flowers on that lemon cucumber. Ooh, I can't wait. This will be my first year growing honeydew, so I'm pretty curious. Um, I didn't know that honeydew was going to trellis, but apparently it does, which is fine. I do have bags that I can catch the honeydews in when they start to form, which they are already starting to flower. Doing pretty good. And then the jelly melon which I was pretty successful with last year. I learned that they trellis like a beast. They grow pretty quickly. I can see that both of his tendrils have died. I don't know what's up with that. Hopefully he'll be all right. Um, but they grow massively. So I planted him next to the chicken wire fence. So when he starts to grow out of control, he can trellis on that. As you can see, all of the radishes are finally gone. They've been consumed or fed to chickens if they split. Uh, Scarlet Emperor Bean is doing pretty good. The Dragon Tongue Bean is also doing pretty good. The Golden Sweet Pea is just taking over. It is. 
doing pretty darn good. Look at all those tendrils tied into each other. It's trellising to itself. And the snap pea is finally starting to grow good. I think it did not like the cold weather, which is funny because it's a snap pea, but, you know, whatever. Floats its boat. But it's doing pretty good, too. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about invasive plant species, only because I'm coming across them more and more frequently, especially up here in Montana. And some of them are being incorrectly sold, at least up here. I purchased this plant behind me, assuming, and it was labeled as a Virginia creeper. Now Virginia creepers are insanely invasive, supposedly, if not controlled properly. Um, they grow quickly, they will take out full grown trees. Um, though they have pretty foliage and the birds love the berries they put out, they're not really good for uncontrolled habitat. My goal in purchasing this plant was to block out the neighbors because when they mow, they blow all their weeds and their grass seeds and shit into my garden and it's getting kind of frustrated and I swear they, they come out here and mow whenever I'm out here, it's like quack work. They do it on purpose, but the whole point was to block the, the neighbors and I wanted something that would grow quickly, grow fully, and I wanted it to take over. Knowing full well that since we have a covered garden, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed in any of the videos, but the top of our garden is completely covered as well. We've got deer netting and stuff stretched across the top of it. So we will have to stop it from overgrowing the top because plants do need sun and the best way to do that is, you know, not have a plant grow over it. But I want to point out that this is not a Virginia creeper. It is a false Virginia creeper, which is okay, which means it's not going to get as big. Um, it's not going to be as invasive and I could probably kill it pretty easily. But I wanted to show you the difference between the two um, and I'll put up a picture here of how you can tell the difference. Now, this plant too, like the Virginia creeper, can cause skin irritations, much like poison ivy. So if you do come in contact with them and you've got kind of sensitive skin, it, it can break out in rash, make you itchy, give you hives. Um, so just be aware of that as well. Though the berries are also poisonous to us, birds love them, which is another reason why it's invasive, because the seeds, they drop them, it'll take over whole forests if you let it. Um, it's in, banned in a lot of states, but apparently it's not in Montana, especially if they can sell it. But I'm really disappointed that the plant store, um, I'm pretty sure I got it from my local nursery, actually, didn't know what it was. And it should have been pretty easy for them to tell. I bought it anyways, knowing that it was a false Virginia creeper. Bought it because it was a false Virginia creeper and not an actual one, because I don't think I would have handled the real one very well. So yeah, these ones, the false ones, don't get nearly as big and not nearly as evasive and easier to kill, but they are still a tendril plant that likes to take over. So my point is, is just kind of be aware of what you're planting. I had actually purchased a Japanese barberry plant, not knowing that it was invasive in 20 states and should be invasive probably in Montana because it grows so densely that it actually becomes a prime habitat for ticks. And we have a bad tick problem up here as it is anyways. I don't need to encourage it at all, let alone in my own yard. I definitely don't want an infestation of ticks in my front yard, especially with getting goats and sheeps and chickens. Just, no, I'm not even gonna begin to deal with that problem. So I promptly took it back. So you can add Japanese barberry to the list of invasive, invasive plants that you don't want to grow unless maybe you put it in a pot and you have the care and the time to prune it and thin it out so it doesn't attract ticks. I don't. I want something to cover up my neighbors and not have to deal with. So I quickly, quickly turned that back in and was like, no thank you, I'm not going to grow that. It was a gorgeous plant though. It was a crimson rose or something like that pretty. Y'all may find this interesting, but I actually have quite a few invasive species of plants on my plot of land here. Um, two were purchased purposely and two were purposed not. So the Virginia creeper, false Virginia creeper, was 
purchased purposely. The ivy, the English ivy I have, was also purchased purposely. The trumpet flower, which I'll show you here in a second, was purchased accidentally. So let's go take a look at that one next. This is another invasive plant that I actually have on the property here, and it is the trumpet vine. It'll sell you on being attracted to or attracting hummingbirds and other birds, and it's good for pollinators, which may be accurate. Um, you can see some of the dead foliage that from last year, but it again, much like all the others, dies back and then just comes back like a beast. Supposedly this one is so invasive that you can't dig it up to kill it, you can't use weed killer, you can't do anything with it because nothing will kill this thing, which is pretty darn interesting. But I would like to see it flower at least once. That would be cool.